Yo guys, what's going on? It is your boy from Land Down Under, Jetman99 here, bringing you a brand new LDL Season 7, Week 5, Power Rankings, and I am joined by the beatiest person in all the land, Alejandro. What's up guys? It's Alejandro, aka The Beard, and um, I'm glad to be here for uh, Week 5's Power Rankings. Let's get glad, into it, Jesse. Uh, I, uh, I'm glad to have you on board. Let me mute my phone really quickly. Okay, so for this week, uh, this week was the best amount of battles that, uh, that I would say that we've had, apart from one battle, which <laughs> which wasn't the best, but every other battle was like close, uh, it was close to watch, and also just fun to watch. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Like, this week was um, a lot of powerful matchups. Mm. Um, you can see it, you can see it along the board. Okay. Um, so... Let's get into the standings here, and we actually have, I think I have messed this up completely, because I've put in the MVP and not the actual schedule here. Sorry for the schedule, messed up once again, sorry guys, my fault, but for the schedule, oh, we actually had uh, Jordan versus Jesse, J Jesse won that, Ramwood versus DJ, Ramwood won that, Matt versus Steven, Matt won that, Chris versus Carlos, Carlos took out the win. Shay vs. Brandon. Brandon came out on top. Mark vs. Alejandro. Mark came out with the W. Brandon and Trug. Brandon got his second win of the season, or his third, I think. And then we have Arthur and Anthony, and then Arthur continued his powerhouse and picked up his fifth W. Or fourth W, really. Yeah. Okay. Sounds about right. And you can. And, 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 uh, uh, and you were able to see the results here on, on the right. So it is so it is close still. Uh, in the first five weeks, um, it is still really close. Apart from some minor gaps, uh, but they can be fixed over over the next coming three three weeks, basically. I like depending on how the matchups go. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. You know, the season's been pretty pretty uh, neck and neck with uh, everybody. I mean, you can even tell uh, just looking at uh, the Alola conference, like, uh, what, fourth through seventh could be anyone's game, basically. Yeah. Um, and, of course, like, you know, Kanto's conference, uh, it's it's pretty stacked up there. Like, you know, Arthur and Mark and Anthony um, are some powerhouses uh, with their, team, their teams that they've drafted this season. So, uh, you know, it's still anyone's game at this point. Mm, it is. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's have a look at, at our rankings for this week. And uh, at number 16, I uh, actually have uh, Jordan from the Cleveland Charmanders. And this is purely because uh, Jordan versus me, but Jordan uh, Jordan has uh, Jordan's actually moved down a spot because I feel as though that he played the same way he did and, and there were others uh, this week that have played much better than him. So nothing against Jordan. It's just that it's just that we saw nothing new from him in a sense. You really want to uh, that. Yeah, uh, my sixteenth uh, slot is uh, Chris with the Midwest Mill Tanks. Uh, you know he had a really uh, he had a really tough matchup this week, um, especially looking at you know him having primarily a Sun team. Uh, versus, you know, Carlos, who can abuse that son. Uh, but, uh, you know, he, he there, were, there were the right intentions there, but with just his leads and, um, you know, the unexpected, he was blown back uh, by Carlos with, you know, really solid prep. Um, I just don't think it was it was his, his week. Um, you know, he had the right steps, but he was just on the wrong footing uh, in that battle. Um, but, uh, you know... I, I think it, it could have played out well if he uh, if he didn't lose his weather setter so early in the game, because um, I think uh, yeah I think solar power Heliolus uh, could have could have steam pressed the the rest of Carlos's team Definitely. if he had, if he had preserved the weather. So For sure. Um, let's see here. Uh, now I'm a little new to this guy, so. Good. No, I go into slot 15 here, Jesse. Yes. yes, you do. All right, cool. So it'll be like the snake snake situated. Okay. Basically, yeah. Sweet. 
All right, so let's go into uh, 15 spot. Uh, got Trig here. Um, Trig and Brennan, uh, they both had some pretty, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty interesting matchup. I think you know from looking at their teams, uh, weather setters, um, you know. Uh, but uh, I I watched the battle and uh, I think Trig got out red for a large portion of this battle. Um, you know, Brennan, Brennan bought, Brennan brought great prep, um, you know, and, and it, I mean, it showed like the Akaberry on Sizzler, um, it, it like, it, it was, it was a close one, you know, Trig bounced back, but, uh, it, it, it just, the, the jelly rolls, man, uh, Brennan knows what I'm talking about. Uh, it, it's so fat and. Uh, you know he 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 couldn't he didn't break through that wall at the very end. So uh, pretty unfortunate for Trig because he's been having a rough season. Mm -hmm. um, but, but welcome to the big boy leagues, and this is how it happens. Unfortunately, uh, you have to play with top tier players such as like Brennan, Arthur, uh, Ramwood, and Gallus, basically. So you do cut the worst of it. <laughs> Some weeks, but it is what it is, and you can only grow from his experience, and and move forward basically. So it's so uh, so it is good learning for him uh, to be able to improve his skills in the draft format. And for me, uh, he's at 15, basically because there was nothing he could do around like Brennan's play style. Brennan just played beautifully, and just and there was nothing much that Trick could do to come back. Mm -hmm from the hole that he was put in by Brennan. Mm -hmm. And in number 14, the player of the week, in my opinion, right here, although he did lose, but my player of the week would be DJ. And this is because uh, DJ played brilliantly. There was nothing better that you can ask for from DJ other than keeping Ramwood on the back foot. The... For the ninety, it's like it's like ninety percent of the game. DJ did get six owed, but I feel as though the match was one o loss, and that is how well DJ played. Uh, DJ would be higher, but uh, but that's the fact that he did lose. He he has moved up that as much, but I will say this: DJ mate, keep up the hard work. You are playing amazingly, and I hope to see you come back for this. And make playoffs because it because it can still happen. Mm. Your well turn said. to Anthony. Yeah. So uh, at slot fourteen, uh, I have uh, Anthony and the Victorville Victinis. Uh, it's a bit of a drop, pretty big one. It is. Uh, this was a pretty important week uh, for him because you know this was this is definitely one of those weeks where he needed to keep up that momentum, but you know. All in all, he had a really tough matchup. Like I said, this week was pretty stacked uh, with... Uh, um, <clears throat> it was pretty... Dad had uh, brought... Mm, definitely. And uh, I think those are my notifications. Give me just a second here. Pardon oh, me. Good, that's fine. There we go. Yep. Yeah. So... Uh... <laughs> Uh, so I'm looking here, and Denny's uh, balanced out his team. He has a really, really strong core, and and you know they they got into this battle, and I just I just watched Arthur decimate him, and I Man mean he had it. all yeah, like he had all of the reads and brought the proper tech, and it just. It worked out in his favor. I was like, wow, like, okay. In a sense, he outstalled the staller um, and put on a lot of offensive pressure. Um, and I, the, the, it, it, it just shows like <laughs> Marty's really good when it comes to uh, draft league formats and, and, and bringing the heat because he's not a force to be reckoned with. Um, at my uh, number 13 slot here, um, I've got Jordan and the Clearfield Charmanders. Uh, Jordan, uh, he came in, you know, he faced you, Jesse, mm -hmm. and uh, he he brought 
he brought the heat. I, 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 I saw what he was what he was packing and the, the mindsets were there. Um, I do think though he he could afford some, uh, to, you know, some bulk to support his team around a bit. But uh, some of his trades this season have been pretty questionable. Um, Jordan's going for the meme this season. Yeah, Bucky like Shire. very definitely on the meme ends of things, and uh, you know when uh, when I witnessed the battle, I was like, okay, I see what we're going here. I want to get into your tech, but we're gonna save that until it's your time in the segment. Hmm. Uh, but uh, you know, he he did have some threats going on, uh, pretty good offensive pressure. But again, you know, Jesse's prep just kind of showed that. Um, you know, Jordan could be taken down with the right amount of preparations. Okay. So. Uh, uh, I didn't that in. Uh, I actually have Chris. Uh, Chris moved down quite a bit for me. And I feel as though that uh, this is because uh, that, uh, as Alejandro said, uh, Chris let his, uh, Chris let his sunsetter die way too early. Uh, uh, which was then leaving his chlorophyll lilligant and also his uh, solar power uh, heliolisk uh, in the wet, basically. Uh, he just left them to uh, not use their abilities uh, to his advantage and therefore let Carlos just overpower his team and be able to let Carlos be the absolute monster he is and just, and just like, and just like run like a madhouse basically and this for me is the reason why that Chris has dropped down quite a few spots to number 13 yeah that was mm. pretty rough <laughs> uh, uh, and in 12 uh, I actually have Shay and Shay lost to Brandon this week and this was a close match uh, I will say that Shay used the ditto beautifully and uh, with the Braylon I'm pretty sure it, it was just that uh, it but uh, it, 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 but it's just as I feel as though that as soon as the Braviary went down, there was nothing much that there was nothing much that uh uh there's much that there was nothing much that Shay could do about the Breloom and because Brandon knew that it was his win con and he knew that he could use it to be able to take kills on Shay's team and be able to use it to his advantage. But the reason why that Shay hasn't moved is because he used that demo perfectly, picking up Three kills this week as a brilliant basically, and Shay just used Brandon's own team against him perfectly. Yeah, um, that's that's a pretty good point. Um, at number 12, uh, I have myself here uh, with Lakewood Trevenants. Uh, my matchup this week uh, was against Mark. Uh, Mark and I have... Uh, I, I think we're pretty familiar with each other's play styles at this point. You have a rivalry, admit it. We, yeah, it's it's definitely up there. Uh, you know, especially like from the regular season, uh, I got a 6-0 sweep on him mm. uh, in season six. Uh, but like this week, there was a lot of uh, challenging uh, threats on both of our teams. It, it, it honestly could have gone either way. Um, Unfortunately, uh, I forgot to pack uh, Miss Piggy, my mammal swine. And uh, I think part of that cost me a bit of the game. Uh, but, you know, uh, especially with our leads, um, I think uh, Mark wasn't anticipating the Heatran lead. And it, 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 set, him on, it, it set him back a bit, uh, bringing down his... Uh, is not to. I, I had some pretty good reads for the most part, but what really caught me by surprise uh, was his defensive blue set, uh, which I realized I didn't have an answer for. Uh, so that really hurt. Um, uh, but you know, with the, with with the necessary prep that I brought, uh, you know, we were able to ha uh, phase out the opponent and get him out when it was necessary. Uh, but uh, I think. Like I said, there was there was plenty of pressure on both ends, uh, but at the very end, you know, he had his insurance policy uh, that that Jolteon. You know, I I didn't even have an answer for it. So uh, you know, good game to my opponent for sure. Um, I'll definitely get into the specifics of the rest of his team 
uh, when I get up to his to his next part of his segment. Um, at uh, number eleven, uh, I have Stephen with the uh, Russellville Rockets. Um, Stephen and Matt, uh, they they had a pretty pretty fun battle. I'm not gonna lie. There was there was some stall and some shenanigans, and Matt really knows how to get under under Stephen's skin for sure. Uh, especially, you know, again with those leads, uh, you know, the whole heat tran or not heat tran, uh, Rotom heat, and the uh, the tech that Matt had for uh, his Mudsdale, uh, it was pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, like I I am really digging Matt's team. I didn't understand it when he first drafted it, but now that I've seen him put it into into practice. Um, I gotta say, it's uh, it's pretty scary, and I think I, I, I'm really looking forward to uh, uh, a Week 12 matchup with him. Uh, but regardless about Prez, um, you know he brought all the necessary stuff uh, that he needed uh, for this matchup. Um, plenty of bulk. It just he was making all the right offensive plays, but at the end, just uh, you know Matt. Matt had Matt was reading him out of his palm, so um, pretty unfortunate for Prez because he's you know he's he's got a he's got a powerful team, but uh, you know it just he he hasn't gotten that footing yet for the season. Um, outside of what I think a, a win or two, uh, it's yeah. check the doc. Uh, yeah, you know, humans, I think out of five. Yeah, so like you said, I mean it's been it's been a it's been a rough season. Especially in the draft format with sixteen people playing each other, it is, it is. Um, it's a so, holy game to, to twelve people. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, and eleven. Uh, actually, have the uh, himself, and and basically, and basically, Alondra said, uh, 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 he had the tech and the prep, but if it wasn't enough prep for if the Bulu and not bringing the correct mon are, are in the form of a uh, mammoth spine and also letting his side to go down, uh, let him down. But uh, for me, and that, and that wasn't too much. Uh, it happens. It is what it is. And that's the reason why for me that he hasn't dropped down too much, but he just dropped enough because uh, he will learn from this and be able to move on and be able to beat me this week in week six. <laughs> Well, thank you. I really look forward to smashing your face in with my mods. That sounds amazing, <laughs> and I can't wait for it to happen, basically. So, uh, 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 and also with that being said, uh, sorry for the noise coming in a moment. Jesus, what's happening here? Okay. So, uh, I actually have myself in number 10 spot, and this is because uh, I had the tech here, I, uh, and also sort of... Uh, Executed that well, but Jordan had some questionable items on some mons that kind of that kind of threw me off guard. Um, I was able to keep him in the game basically. So uh, for that, uh, I've then moved up one spot. But I've learned from this, and I will be able to prep for every single thing I possibly can on an opponent's team from now on. And mm. now, uh, and now, uh, back to you for shape. All right, so uh, I, I I think you hit some of the really key points of Shay's battle. Um, I didn't get to see his battle, unfortunately, um, because he uh, the battle video was no longer available. But, you know, I got the ends with my boy Shay, so he gave me the details on the match. And I got to say, uh, that ditto, the ditto with the three kills was pretty awesome. Um, and, you know, from, from, from what I understand... Uh, you know, there was a lot of offensive pressure up until the very end, um, and you know, Shay Shay let it slip from his fingers, and uh, you know, it it, it kind of shows. I mean, Brandon is a pretty tough opponent. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I remember playing him in season six, and uh, he he's got that bulk, man. Um, I think didn't he? I think he did the trade recently. Picked up the Mega Sableye, I believe. Week, uh, week when he made that trade, I think. No, it was week four. He made that trade. Yeah, I, like 
you know, when I thought about Brandon and his draft this season, I was like, I'm surprised he didn't pick up his mega from last season. But, you know, to our surprise, what do you know? It's back on his squad. Like, uh, Brandon's got Brandon's got a really interesting team. I, I think there's there there's some questionable mons, but like they put in a lot of offensive pressure. Yeah. So uh, I mean, especially that fairy dragon steel core, like mm. it, <laughs> it does the work. Does. So um, yeah, like you know, uh, Gugam and Shay. Um, let's see here. Uh, at number nine, uh, I actually have DJ. Uh, uh, the Chelsea uh, Felsningers. Uh, DJ, uh, I tell you, like, I, I may, may, I don't know if it sounds biased, but like, I'm a DJ fanboy. So am I, so am I, so am I. Like, I, I got so I much hope for him. I got so much hope for him this season. I know he's had like a really rough start. Like, mm. I mean, you know, the differential shows right now at the bottom of the barrel, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, I, I, I help him out here and there. And, and um, you know, I really, I really have a bit of insight on where, what direction he's taking his team now with those proper transactions. And, uh, he's going to be a threat. I kind of feel, I feel a little threatened myself, uh, you know, so, yeah. uh, I keep that in mind, but, uh, you know, this, this battle with, with, uh, Squid was just impeccable because I mean, he had, he had, he was making all of the right reads. And he had Squid basically like stalled out. It was like, you know, I don't have a proper switch. Um, and uh, that was the beauty of his team that he packed this week. Because, you know, uh, Squid recently picked up that con uh, Conkelder. Mm. And, uh, you know, DJ, uh, he's got kind of a frail team. You know, with with what he has is a lot of speedy offensive pressure. Um but uh, once uh, once we, we got to check out the battle and really see how uh, everything played out, you know, that went for quite some time. Um, it's just unfortunate at the very end, you know, uh, uh, Squid made the right read and, and he was able to DJ pop off up, the... Yeah. Uh, yeah, like DJ, uh, if DJ just kept up that momentum, uh, you know, he could have found the opening and uh, pulled off what he needed to do. But, you know, it's it's Pokemon. It's what happens. Like, uh, you know, the, the the sweep was not pretty. But, you know, Squid's a great player. Like, he, he found that opening. He took advantage of it when he could. And it was GG from there. A mm. um, bit unfortunate for DJ. But like I said, I think this was, like, one of his really important power weeks. Yeah. Um, I won't get any further, but... Yeah. Wait till wait wait till next power ranking. Okay, so, there's some yeah. there's some stuff. Yeah. So and I will uh, say this uh, uh with DJ skill, uh I was just saying it uh, from day one. Uh, the DJ can battle, uh, we'll let him down. It was like his team prep, but I thought that he's improved heaps with his prep and I can see him uh making making the finals in in season eight. And and I'll call this now season eight. DJ is making finals. You, you had to be first. Ooh, that's a that's a that's a claim there. That's a it is. Claim. He is. He is. Uh, uh, and if I'm in finals with him, I will throw it. Okay, <laughs> I will throw it. Uh, and then number nine, uh, I actually have Brennan, and Brennan, Brennan, Brennan has found his groove. Brennan is back to where the 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 uh, uh, gym junkie Brennan. We all love. Uh, he is back, and Brennan is here with a vengeance and ready to play. Uh, Brennan versus Trick this week, and Brennan just had uh, uh, all the switches, the necessary sacks basically. And Bre uh, Brennan had the game in his control from the first turn all the way till the last turn, mm. and Brennan just played brilliantly. And I can't wait to see how Brennan plays. In these upcoming weeks, and hopefully he loses week seven to myself. <laughs> uh, Throw on the punches, Jesse. Oh, I am. I am. <laughs> I have. I have to win necessary, basically. Uh, and number eight, I uh, actually have Anthony, and this is because uh, Anthony versus Arthur, and um, and when you versus Arthur, everyone knows that you are going into the battle preparing yourself to lose, basically. That is how much of a threat Arthur is. 
with his prep and his tech. But uh, Anthony went into this battle, but I feel as though that he went into the battle knowing 100% that he would lose. And even though you go into the battle thinking that you may lose, but you, but you have to have hope for yourself. And and, and I feel as though Anthony didn't, and that is what let him down the most. Uh, he just let Arthur step all over him and use him as a warm up, basically. So, and that is so. <laughs> that is very quite uh, unfortunate. Uh, and it is what it is. So I feel so that Anthony will come back next week and over the confidence that he has had for the past four weeks. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Anthony's confidence is definitely, definitely an interesting presence this season. It is. Um, so at number eight here, uh, I've got Mark. Uh, for the Arizona Volcaronas. Um, so, Mark's dropped the bit here. Um, and I know this is this might sound biased or whatever, but uh, I do think that when Mark led the battle, like I said, he, got, he was a little shocked with everything, and it put him in a bad spot. Um, you know, there was a lot of, there's a lot of struggle going on there. Um, and, you know, his, hmm, I, I brought the right prep. For him, and I definitely put a lot of pressure on. Um, you know, I survived what I think it was like a plus one waterfall from a Mega Gyarados with uh, my max defense Heatran, and I was able to get the burn off and cripple with. Um, so you know, I, I I was prepared for any of his unburdened shenanigans, or uh, you know his D dance setup from Mega Gyarados, uh, but like. Uh, you know, like I said, he had he brought the insurance policy, and that saved that saved him. Uh, so I think maybe we both were a little underprepared for each other this week. Um, but oh, well, yeah. But uh, you know, like I said, the insurance policy paid off for him. Um, but you know, there was a lot of different answers. The uh, the Tapu Bulu was pretty awesome tech. Uh, you know, I didn't have an answer for it. He killed. He killed, uh, killed my uh, Romatisse, you know, and I was like, oh, like, I'm scared of him burden, so I'm going to bring Trick Room to, like, deflect that. I was, I was really scared for him burden because I've dealt with enough Halucha sweeps uh, in the Lonely League mm. with Fighting Elite and Bren. Like, no, we shut that down. Uh, but, you know, it was a good game to mark for sure. Um, and uh, I... I I think uh, this is this this upcoming week. Uh, let's see, I wonder who he's um, Mark, what is he doing? Mark is. Oh, oh wow, he's got a really good differential. Mm, he does so, uh, so far this season. Um, yeah. Mark? Oh, oh, this is gonna be an interesting matchup. Mark is Brennan, yes. Okay. Yeah, he's facing Brennan. Yeah. That's gonna be. Uh, quite the matchup. So, I'm 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 really excited to to look at that. Um, but uh, at uh, number seven this week, uh, I've got uh, the man himself from the land down under, uh, Jesse here, and his outback Kamalas. Uh, Jesse uh, brought some tech. I was impressed with the hidden power fire, Regirock. Um, Thank you. You made a great. You're welcome, sir. You made a great first turn read guarding that Regirock, um, because you needed it exactly for what you brought it for. And uh, you know the battle was going pretty smoothly. It's like oh, okay, yeah, like you knew how to handle Jordan's off offensive pressure and bring in the right switches at the right time. And I was like, wow, this is a pretty good. This is a pretty good match. My only, my only criticism. I've told you this already. Was was that that trick room at the end? I was like, dude, you it was it was a three. You, you could have got that sweep at the end and had you covered under trick room. I could've, I could've. But yeah, but other than that, like you you brought on the right stuff. I think uh, I think it was like a paralysis with your mega pincer. No, there was a focus uh, sash rough skin. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and you know, I, I was like, you know, there's some good coverage you could get here. Bates, I was like, Hidden Power Fire? 
on on a Greninja? What? I, I don't know. I mean, I know it was also in range, but it was oh. like, well, you know, I, I think there's there's a set that gives you uh, uh, Thunderbolt. But regardless of the fact, you played really well. Yeah. And uh, losing your bit, mate. Losing your bit. But I think it's on my end. Yeah. It showed. It showed. Yeah, <laughs> losing your big time now, mate. And it's Don't on my end. So uh, while Beard is having, well, I'll ask you, uh, while I'm having some connection difficulties. I, uh, I want to go on with my number seven, and my number seven is actually uh, is actually that of Stephen of the Russellville Rockets and Stephen vs Matt. And Stephen has actually moved up a bit, and this is due to uh, Anthony dropping. Actually, uh, I'm with Stephen. Uh, Stephen played really well, but I feel as though he did not have enough counters for the Victini. Uh, oh. Oh, once like the Hydreigon and the extra went down, and there was nothing much that Steven could do for the Victini, because uh, because I uh, once got set up, Victini was just running house and basically doing everything. So uh, with that being said, uh, 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 Steven needs to preserve his counters to the opponent's win con more, and uh, uh, and that's what will help him go further in the season. But I, but I feel that Stephen played really well. Uh, uh, all it was, just a few minor plays, and the like, uh, and like sort of let him down. And it is what it is in a sense, basically. And in the end of number six, we have Mark. Mark has also moved up one due to Anthony falling as well. But with this, uh, Mark played really well against Beard. <laughs> He was surprised by Beard's tech, but Mark had the better prep on the day that I would say with the Halucha being defensive. Uh, the Halucha did go down, no, uh, not Halucha, the, the Tapu Bulu uh, being defensive, uh, and Bulu actually picked up two kills, and then he was able to uh, cripple down Beard's team at the point where he was able to send in the fast Mon Jolteon. And, and just pick up three kills and be able to seal the win and take the game away and put Mark at four and one at this point in time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, you're on point with that. Um, damn, damn, what a match though. It is what it is. <laughs> I'm still thinking about it. I'm still thinking about it too. It I'm is what like, it is, don't worry. It is what it is. Keep thinking um, on it until week seven so I can beat you this week. <laughs> oh, don't start with me, boy. <laughs> um, at uh, at slot six, um, I've got um, Brennan for the Salt Lake City Swampers here. Uh, Brennan played pretty impeccable. Not gonna lie, like he brought he brought fantastic prep, and he was just reading Trig the entire game. It was. Is really rough because, like, I'm also a Trig fan. You know, I'm glad that we've got new people in the LDL this season and, you know, really testing out the waters and seeing what these guys can bring to the table. But, you know, Brennan is one of those longstanding players who brings the heat and he's got he's got the prep. He's got the prep and um, it just showed. Uh, it's pretty unfortunate, again, for Trig. But, uh, you know, he came through. Brennan absolutely came through and shut down any chances Trig had this week. And no lie, like, Brennan's got a tough team to, to deal with this season. Um, he just hasn't been on his, he hasn't just, he just hasn't been on the best record yeah. so far this season. But uh, I would imagine, I would imagine him picking up and getting momentum um, as the weeks proceed looking oh. forward. After which, um, are you, oh, after week seven? <laughs> yes. All right. I, I need I'll a give win. you that. I I'll need a win. <laughs> I will give you that. Um, at slot five here, uh, I've got Brandon and Mew, the Moon Valley Mewtwo's. Uh, Brandon 
like I said, he's he's got he's got his he's got his team. And I, I mean, I kind of mentioned it with Shay's battle. Um, you know, it could have gone either way, and I know Brandon has a threat of a team. Um, and just understanding his play style and um, you know handling handling Shay as he did, uh, it doesn't surprise me uh, that that you know I. Um, that I've got him where I've got him this week. Uh, I think he's going to continue to put on this pressure. Um, and, you know, again, it's like I said, the whole fairy dragon seal core, um, his, his, his choices in his mons, like, yeah, that's what I've got for him. Uh, so Brian played really well. Uh, uh, I did sort of uh, fault him in a sense. It was that he did not prep for every zone team uh, in the form of Ditto, uh, which did let him down. But I, but, uh, but I feel that uh, Brandon was able to sort of uh, uh, he was able to sort of uh, assess the situation at hand and be able to keep Brilliant alive, uh, so that he was able to wall uh, Shay's Ditto as Brilliant, as his own Brilliant, and be able to sort of out. Uh, and and like be able to sort of uh, out sort of uh, out uh, out power it with the HP difference. So uh, mm-hmm. well played, Brandon. He, he did what you had to do, although it was at some cost. But it uh, but it is what it is. Uh, and at number four, uh, we actually both have a squid, and I'll talk about this first. A uh, squid. Squid, 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 squid. Ramwood, mate, Ramwood. You're going to hate me for this, but I feel as though that you should have lost this battle. But, but, but a big but. Uh, you were so... If you were able to... See your opening... Uh, or in DJ's team. And be able to sort of uh, take that kill. And then be able to set yourself up. To what you needed to do. And from your... Uh, from your... Uh, from your original game plan and be able to sort of keep it uh, in track use it to your advantage and be able to take out the win like you wanted to do so you uh, I see you were on the back foot but are you able to see your opening and and just take it beautifully and and for that mate well done well played and GG basically yeah Ranward <laughs> Good old Squiddo. Good old Squiddo. I mean, you, you came with the right prep. I see it. It's there. It's clear as mud. Like, but DJ, man. DJ had you all over the place. I mean, come on. That How long was that battle? It was like 36 turns. Yeah. And then, I mean, like, I think 25 was, of the think... turns was 6 0. Yeah, like. No, 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 I mean... 6 6. Yeah, because I think he said something like I was watching his video um, plug into the Blazing Squid <laughs> on YouTube, by the Link, way. Uh, Shameless plug for your boy. Link in uh, the description <laughs> for, uh, for actually all channels that I plug. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, he. Uh, he 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 was struggling, you know. Just watching watching him explain himself through his battle, and like, oh my gosh, like, how am I handling this? There's so much, there like just just the switch ins and blocking out the Conkeldor. Um, they said it just it, it set him back a bit. Um, I'm surprised he wasn't as offensive with his Lurantis as he could have been. I think he hesitated at certain points, and I, I don't blame you because. I mean, I didn't want the uh, Infernape or uh, Togekiss coming in on that. But, I mean, he made the right reads exactly as he should have. Um, and and it worked out. But, like, what, I want to say, he said something like 20-something 20, 20 minutes into uh, his battle. He got he got the first kill. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's, that's, that's surprising. But, like, you know, you still played well, dude. Like, you got the sweep. I mean, it definitely adds the momentum. Um, but uh, at number three here, uh, which we both happen to share, 
yeah. is Carlos and the Des Moines Darmanitans. And it uh, looks like he hasn't moved up. He's kind of in the same spot here. He's uh, been there for like the past three weeks, I think, really, or four he, weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Carlos, you know, mm, he he played it smart. And he he put on the offensive pressure as soon as as soon as the Pokemon hit the field. Um, Chris led with the Sneasel, I believe, and he brought some tech, which was surprising. He brought that fling tech with the King's Rock. Yeah, um, that was, was kind of cool, but it was also unfortunate that uh, you know he had to eat a bullet punch in exchange, which I think I think that first bullet punch was a was a maybe a bowl of sorts for it to survive Uh, because it lived on yeah it lived on like four hp i was like oh wow that's surprising um but you know we all saw it like it it was it was a pretty rough battle to witness um once that weather came out uh from protecting the sneasel um you know carlos was able to abuse the sunlight and to his advantage and get off that solar power boosted attack and you know it it just steamrolls it's it's a rough situation um and i i do think chris had the right mindset as far as like bringing that weather um he may have benefited this week if he brought the second weather setter through his mega charizard um just to keep up that staying power but i mean watching watching that heliolisk and sun deal massive amounts of damage uh, you know, to some of some of Carlos's main main threats, like I mean, Sylveon and Cryogonal, like there was there was a lot of damage done. Um, it just it just fell short because there wasn't enough weather support, and uh, you know, Carlos was able to take advantage of that. Um, I think he said something about uh, Salamence uh, living a super effective Dragon Pulse. We looked at the Calyx app. Uh, from uh, from what Chris was talking to me about it, um, he's like, "Yeah, if it, if the sun was up, he would have uh, he would have uh, taken down the Salamence, and it would have been a sweep with the with the Heliolisk, which was really surprising to me. Uh, uh, but you know, it's unfortunate. It's what happens. Um, so yeah, what have you got to say about this match, Jesse? Nothing more I could add other than the fact that Calus played amazingly." He was able to it fun and just and just keep up the pressure that Carlos has had every week, and and I see Carlos going all the way to the second round of playoffs, and then it being a close match there to whether or not he will make it through to the finals and take out his first LDL championship, maybe. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Mm-hmm. I could definitely see that. He's yeah. he's got the potential for he sure. Does, Great does, battler. Does. Uh, and in the second spot, we have Matt back there again. Uh, Matt was complaining because he was back in fourth last week. So Matt came out this week against Steven and just ran absolute uh, pressure. Uh, I feel as though that Matt waited for the perfect moment to be able to send in his Victini at the perfect time, and be able to sort of set it up and just go for the sweep. We needed to pick it up four kills, playing amazingly, and just Matt, nothing more I can say other than that you played amazingly and I used the bikini to its full potential, basically. Mm. Well, well said. Well said. Um, I, I kind of mentioned it uh, when we reviewed uh, Prez's segment earlier uh in our discussion uh you know matt brought some really pressure and stall shenanigans um like you said i mean the the mudsdale from the mudsdale uh to the tornadoes and then to that clean setup at the end with the victini like it was impeccable like i was i was really impressed like i said i i i've got a little bit well I've got a little bit of uh, anxiety with Matt's team, but I mean, it, it's it's a great team. I, I'm I'm surprised. I, I mean, I know he's got some switch ups in the works here, um, and uh, you know, again, it, the 
the the the prep and uh i think what was it i think it was the colberberry at the very end mm. uh the colberberry really helped him out i, I mean it just sealed the deal it so did. um you know and it, and it shows this week with with matt jumping up as as much as he has um and i really look forward to seeing what he's what he's got coming uh, for week six um at our number one spot here week five we have the laziest ghost yes sir the birmingham errands our boy himself arthur the berry king uh <laughs> arthur's battle this week like i said he came through and just had the stall ready to outstall the staller Anthony, I love you. Got love for you, dude. Like, but <sighs> Marty brought the heat. Yeah. That's all I can say. Marty brought the absolute heat. Marty was able to break through the walls perfectly. Absolutely. And absolutely. And for like Anthony, as he's taking that mute, uh, Anthony kind of crumbles in a sense because I feel that that mute is like the solid wall. To his team, the Mew just stalls out everyone. But uh, Arthur was able to sort of uh, assess that and just have the counters for the Mew and be able to take it down and be able to play uh, effortlessly to win the battle and take out the W in week five for the fourth time in a row. So, uh, with that being said, guys. Uh, those are our rankings. Uh, if, if you hate us, say behind our backs, not to our face, basically. <laughs> and <laughs> wait, oh, I've just, I've just revealed way too early. But uh, and I've seen the, and I think this week's battle of the week goes to Ramwood vs DJ and Ramwood for this. You have DJ to thank for this because uh, DJ played brilliantly, and because you won the battle, you get the win. But uh, and it's also for the fact that, uh, just the fact that uh, DJ had you on the back foot, and then from one pivotal turn, are you, are you able to come back and, and just pick up a 6 0 win, which is amazing? And and I've actually never seen it happen before in Pokemon, basically. So, a DJ will play to you guys. Uh, sorry, DJ, but I feel like the DJ next week, uh, I will be able to keep up this pressure and play and play even better. Absolutely, you hit it on. You, <laughs> what are they? How's that saying go? I just said hit the nail on the head. Yep, hit the nail on the head with the hammer. Got it going. Sure. Congrats, congrats, dude! Like it, it was, it was, it was great. Like yeah. I was pretty excited seeing this. Um, but yeah, so do you think this concludes uh, our uh, review of this week, Jesse? Uh, it does, uh, and I will say that. Uh, and before we close this off, uh, I have an announcement for the power rankings uh, from week six and onwards. Uh, you will have the Lazy Ghost host it because uh, I have uni and I have assignments galore coming up. So I will not be able to commit to this every week. But I actually look forward to coming on maybe in like maybe in like week 16 and be able to do one last week for you guys. But uh, uh, from week... From week six and onwards, you have a lazy ghost running the power power rankings and taking over my side of the team, and then having a new host beside him each week, basically. So, if you want to say goodbye now, Alejandro. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks, you guys, for tuning in. Um, it's great to be on the power rankings, and uh, hopefully, I see a little bit more of myself up on this. To talk about your battles. Absolutely. Uh, and with that being said, guys, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this has been the boy from Land Down Under, Land Down Under, Jetman99, uh, signing off, and peace.